Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Ockett with Joe Tafoya, former Seahawk right here and seven-year NFL player, went to the University of Arizona, and uh, back here to join us today during the game is uh, we're here uh, watching women's football. Uh, your thoughts on women's football? Well, I feel comfortable here down on the field. Um, it's a little different to be watching women's football, but this is sort of an emerging sport right now, and there's a lot of interest in it. Getting down on the field does feel comfortable. I, I know it, for you it's got to be a special feeling anytime you walk on a football field. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much grew up on the football field. I've been playing football, or I was playing football since I was about eight, and um, it's just something that it, it becomes part of you and you never lose it. So. You uh, are from Pittsburgh, California, and uh, tell us about those years uh, when you started playing football at eight and advancing to high school and then to college. Junior football and uh, high school football, and then I was um, picked up by the University of Arizona, and then I got drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, this is a, a fun time of the season for me, too, to watch all of the draft happen and um, see these young men get their shot at the NFL. Uh, it's really exciting, and um, I mean... What what better weather could you ask for than this? You still stay in uh, touch with the Seahawks teammates? You were there in 05 and 06. Yeah, the ones that are still local, I, I keep in touch with them. Some of us have, you know, different places that we live in during different times of the year. But we all, all the, the players that I played with, there are a core group of us that we all stay in touch. Jordan Babineau is still around town. Um, Craig Terrell is still in town. I still, every once in a while, talk to Grant Winstrom and Bryce Fisher. So mostly defensive guys. You were there in the Seahawks, uh, really great recent uh, glory days before what they're going through right now, making it to the Super Bowl uh, in 06. Uh, that experience had to be incredible. It really was. Um, that's sort of the pinnacle of my career. I got to go to the Super Bowl in Detroit and play against the Steelers, and that's just something that you just never forget. You know, you fight your whole life to get to a moment, and we made it there. Unfortunately, we didn't win the big game, but we still made it, and you know, I'm very proud of that, I'm very proud of my accomplishments. And um, I even had the NFC Championship ring that they gave to me. So I wear that all the time. At, and it's not every day you get to wear your accomplishments on your ring, on your finger. <laughs> oh, I agree. <laughs> right. it, it is great. that, uh, And you did so much, really, uh, the whole team to really energize the, the city of Seattle and the Puget Sound region, laying ground for work for what is there right now. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a strong interest, there always has been, in Seattle sports. But during that time, it was sort of transitional. We were changing colors, changing coaches, a lot of things going on. But what's always been consistent were the fans. And what we did was we gave them hope, and we gave them something to cheer for. And the minute you do that, the city was energized. And then when the team went um, and, and played in New York in the Super Bowl in New York, you could literally feel it in the air. Everywhere you went, you saw 12 flags, you saw people wearing Seahawk colors, and it's just one of those things that unites a community. What are you doing these days? So I've always been an entrepreneur, and, and um, I've had a lot of business partners. I've done a lot of very interesting things. I uh, bought a company. I sold the company. I've been in uh, mobile technology. But right now, I've got two young kids at home, and my wife and I decided we, we wanted to start our own company together, and we're selling women's apparel. It's called Lady 12, and uh, the focus is around female fan gear. And we sell it into Albertsons and Safeway and Bartell Drugs locally, and then we're moving into new markets like Detroit and Illinois and San Francisco. Now that 12 rings a bell. Hmm, 12. Where, does it, where might that come from? <laughs> Inspired definitely by the experience that we all shared here, you know, in the last couple of years. Um, but it's a it's a community driven thing more than anything else. Seven years in the NFL and a very successful college career at Arizona. What do you uh, share with these young ladies out here uh, to keep them pointed in the right direction for what they want to do in their career? I just think that there isn't enough hard work that you can do. You you can always do more. Always be willing to do what someone else isn't willing to do. That's how I made my career. I was never the best player. I was never even the best in high school, but I was always the guy that was willing to stay the extra time and put in the extra time in in the weight room, in the film sessions, you know, eating right, studying, all of those things that it takes to become a real pro professional. And so even if you don't have all of the talent in the world, you can still make it. And, um, Look, injuries are always part of the game. You never know when you're going to get your chance. So even if you're sitting 
behind someone. Always be ready. Always be prepared. That's my message. I think that's a great message right there. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the game, and thanks for supporting uh, women's sports. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the interview. You bet. That's Joe Tafoya. We'll be back with more right here on STSPN.com.